All right, can you now see the uh, a Word document that says sales order database on the top? Yes. This is the same one that I sent to you yesterday. We're going to go over it, and I think I'm going to be able to explain to you why those joints were not working. All right. Now, what I would like you to do, and I mean, let's face it, there is an easy way to do this, and there's a hard way to do this. The easy way to do this is to just grab this, copy it into the, the SQL query window, and boom, you're done. So what I'd like you to do is like in here, where I added me, add you. You can make a mythical address, but I want to go over everything, you know, for every single one of these queries that are in here, what I want to do is I want to go over what that particular query is about. The, I don't know what you'd call it, the, uh, the syntax for it or whatever. All right. And I want to do that every single time. Why? Because, whoops, I want you to understand. Don't on it. I want you to understand what's going on in here. That's all. All right, so let me go back. Oh, man. Did the, is it still showing on the screen or did it leave? It left. It left, yeah. It's because I pushed the wrong doggone button, so. All right, is it back? Yes. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, remember, you know, rather than me having to constantly be switching shares back and forth, I'm going to go through a bunch of these, all right, and then we're going to start putting them in, but I'm going to go back and forth, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the screen for um, PHP My Admin, so you won't see me going back to this one in just a few minutes. But what I want to do, because, you know, you started asking about this yesterday, Keegan. So we're going to talk, start talking about CRUD. Remember, CRUD is an acronym for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. We've, everything we've been doing thus far has been the read. In other words, the queries we've been doing thus far, every query that you do that is a select is a read-only query. It allows you to show information any way you want. You can filter information, et cetera. All that stuff said, all right, um, you can't change it. And I think I went over that yesterday. All right, now, just so you know, the reason that I think that yesterday, a bunch of those, when I started to do the joins with you, they didn't work. I was bouncing back and forth when I was working in here between working with SQL Server and working with, um, with MySQL. And I think a bunch of the records that are in here, instead of being an identity field that started at one, they were, they were an identity field that started at either 1,000 or they started at 700. And as you can imagine, if you try to match together one and 701, they don't match or one in 1,001, they don't match. I think later we'll be able to run some queries, some update queries to make to get the, the databases and jive with one another, but let's just see. So when you do an insert, you can see that again, I took every word that's in here that is a, um, a keyword and I capitalized it. You insert into, normally it's a table. I don't know if we'll have time to talk about it or not, but there's also something called a view. All right, Keegan, you may have heard me tell this, give this analogy before Angie, I don't know if you did or not, but you know, again, I remember probably about five years ago, um, I was interested in, in seeing if my local bank could refinance the house I was living in at the time. And um, so I went in there and I wasn't sure even who to talk to, so um, I, I was already doing some business at the bank. I was, making, uh, I was making a deposit and I was talking to the teller that was there and, and I knew her and I just said, um, you know, I got some questions too about possibly refinancing my house. And she said right away, oh, you're gonna have to talk to one of the personal bankers. 
all right, because the, the woman over there, she can help you. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is the personal banker has a different view of my data than a teller. A teller can typically take deposits, give you withdrawals, tell you your current balance, but there's not a lot more that the teller can do because that's their job. On the other hand, a personal banker can do a lot more because when they look at your data, there's a lot more they can see. You know, the teller might only be able to see your name, address, city, state, zip, your balance, et cetera, but the personal banker can see a lot more. Well, you can do the same kind of thing and you can give different users different views of your data. So we may end up talking about that before the end of the semester. I'm not sure if we will or not. The point is, when we do this and we say insert into, we're using a table here. So we're saying into the customer's table. All right, the first name in my case will be Jeff. The last name will be Scott. The address will be 755 Par Road. That's the street address. The city will be Wentzville. The state will be Missouri. The zip code will be 63385. I think this is going to give an error because I think we said the area code was an int. I'll go back and check that. So that should not be in single quotes, but we'll go back and we'll check that. And finally, the regular phone number is 286-3675. Now, let's talk about what can possibly go wrong and, and some ramifications of putting in this particular query. First of all, and I, I should have done this beforehand, to be honest with you, I spent six hours last night, I'm writing an Android app where students are going to be, hopefully, are going to be able to put their resume into this Android app. And that way, if they're looking for jobs and if this coronavirus you know, lingers on until through the summer, they can give people their, their online resume, not just their portfolio, but they can do it as an Android app. Bottom line is I spent a lot of time doing it. It now runs with no errors, but it gives me no output, which isn't a good thing but I didn't spend a lot of time on this yesterday. So when I do this, I'm not sure if, if it's, if it's, um, if I get an error on this, it may want me to put in an ID. All right. It may or may not. All right. With, with, with some relational database management systems, I'd have to put in this, uh, whatever it's called. I think it's customer ID. Okay. But then I'd have to put in here literally the word null. And the reason for that is the system is going to put a value in here for me. I don't want to put a value in there. I'm going to leave this out and I'm going to hope that it takes it the way it is and it doesn't give me an error. Now, I do want to say something though before we're going to run this query in about a minute, but I want to say something. Let's suppose. In fact, I'm going to bounce back for just a second. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go and say with SQL, I brought up my database. I want to say select count star. I realize you can't see this. It's no biggie from customers. All right. And I'm going to run this and it comes back and it says, we have 27 customers, all right? So that's how many customers were actually in the uh, in our table, okay? So why am I telling you that? Who cares, all right? When I put this in, ideally at least, I'm gonna go in as customer 28. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, now later, if I go and remove me, if I go later and I remove me, then customer ID 28 is now gone from the database. If I put in a new customer, they go in as 29. And 28, for lack of better words, is a hole in the database. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's just because that's the way that it's set up. All right? Because when you work with identity fields, like we did, the system is automatically counting 
So as you put things in, it counts, but it's already used 28. So even if you remove it, it's already used it because really when it's putting it in there as an identity field, it's for lack of better words is like a read only field. All right. So I'm going to grab everything that I've got here. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. I'm going to go in and change my view and I'm going to go into, there I am right here. So I am into um, PHP my admin. If you closed yesterday, if you closed XAMP, please open it up. Make sure that you, you if, it, if it says um, stop, or if it says select on both Apache and MySQL, choose them both. And then right to the right of the MySQL button that now would say stop, choose configure, and that should bring this up. And then bring up our customer XYZ database. Did all that make sense? Yes. Okay. It is totally legit, totally possible. If you want to do this, you can just leave this running too. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not a real big memory hog or anything like that. So there's my insert statement right there. Can you see it on the screen? Yes. All right, I'm going to try to run it, see if it gives me an error or anything else. And it did. It says, unknown column, cussed first name. Well, let's go back and look. Well, notice I put them all wrong in there. They should all say customer instead of cussed. So you're going to have to change that on yours to customer, first name, customer last name, customer street address, customer city, customer state, customer zip code, whoops, I think I spelled that one wrong. Customer zip code, customer area code. Now, if you look up on the screen right here and you notice there's area code, see how it says small int? Can you see that or not on your screen? Yeah. Okay. And so that's customer area code. Let me goof that up. And finally, customer phone number. All right. Now I'm going to see. It still may fail. But I'm going to copy it anyway just to see if it succeeds or not. All right, it looks like it succeeded. Now, how do I know? All right, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna say select star from customers. I don't need the where one, but that'll show me all my customers. Clicking go, and I should be on the second page now. And there I am, see that? So please go back and I'd like you to put this into the system, except replace that stuff with your information. Now, one last thing, feel free to start typing if you want to, but one last thing, what I want you to do is when you get done with this and you put in your information, save this query before you run it. Just highlight it all, do a control C and once it works, copy it back into your Word document. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so replace the query you have in there now in the Word document with yours after it works. Because to give you some credit here, I'm going to ask that when we get all done with this, that you go in and you give me the updated worksheet with your information in there. That's why if you say, well, that's too personal, just put your name and put a fictitious or put this address in, just change it to your name. I don't really care. Make sure that you have no quotes around the 314 because area code is a short int. I'm going to shut up for a second and I'm going to allow you to, to put that query in.
put it in, run it, and please let me know if you have any errors or if there's anything you don't understand. Have you run the query? I just ran mine and I don't see my name in here anywhere. Well, remember, you're going to be on the second page. Okay, yeah. So right near the top or near the bottom, you've got that, uh, I think it's called the guillemet that's got two greater than signs. Click one of those and you should see it on the second page. Angie, how about you? Can did you run it? Okay, mine worked. All right. I'm not getting any. Uh, Finishing anything. up the typing right now. Okay, gotcha. And what did you say you wanted us to do with the Word document? Again? I want you to basically take this query, copy it to the clipboard. Then go back to your Word document. I've given you the answer in there, so to speak. Replace my answer with this query. So in other words, it's going to have all the information about you in it as opposed to about me in it. This way, too, you've got a permanent record of working queries on there. All right. Angie, let me know when you're done if yours worked or didn't work. I got eight errors on mine. Um, <clears throat> unexpected beginning of statements, unexpected token. It looks like it's um, okay. syntax. When, when you started, when you started and you were at the beginning and you, you got the beginning page that came up in here, did you choose databases over here? Or did you choose company XYZ database? I chose the, the customers. No, no, I'm talking about the database. So when we first, when we first started, all right, when we first started, yeah. you chose, does it say this up there? Yes, it does. All right, well, that's good. You've got insert into customers, correct? Yeah. Did you change all of these to customer first name, customer last name, instead of cust? Yes. So yours looks, other than maybe your name, the stuff down here, Yours looks exactly the same as mine does right now. As far as I can tell, it, it does, yes. Well, then I'll tell you what, if you can, real quickly, um, hit print screen on your, uh, on your computer. You know, you, you know how to save that, like into, uh, you know, use paint and save it into a ping or a JPEG file. If you do a print screen, it's going to take a picture of your screen. Then if you open up Paint and paste that in, it'll save it as probably a .png file. And if it does that, just quickly email it to me, and I'll take a look at it right now. I don't want to go on if, if you have errors.
So if you're able to do that, just email it to me right away. I will immediately take a look at it. And Keegan, I did get your uh, fixed test, so thank you. I will take a look at that during the break. Okay, sorry about that. I had print screen and it turned off my Wi-Fi, disconnected me. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. No, I'm sorry, I did that. Uh, do you want me to go ahead and email that to you? Yes, if you would. Okay. <clears throat> and the goal today is for us to finish this worksheet not that's why i want to get you know if we have a problem now we're going to have problems throughout You having problems? Yes. <laughs> Are you able to save the file? Okay. Um, yes, I'm having problems. I, I'm unable to save the file or... Can you bring up paint? Yeah, let me try that. Yeah, that's the easiest way to do it. Just in okay. your in your search bar down at the bottom left, type in paint, hit enter and see if you've got paint on your machine. And if you do bring it up, just paste that in, then save it and then email it to me. Okay. <clears throat> Keegan said his is working, so I, I'm hoping that you know we can get yours working, and then we can just just go on from there. I guess that the first part of this we're only going to have number one done. That's okay though, really. Don't don't feel bad or anything else because I want to make sure yours works. If it doesn't work for a simple query like this, it sure as heck probably isn't going to work when we have more advanced queries. All right, got it. Okay. So let me take a look. Shoot. 
seed. Okay. The error is your first name's fine, your last name's fine, your address is fine, your city, state, and zip are fine, but you stopped there. You didn't put in an area code and a phone number. So on yours, where you've got values, you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I All do. right, after 63385, put a comma and then put in an area code that's not in the that's not in quotes, then a comma, then a phone number. Does that make sense? Because it's expecting eight different fields, you're only giving it six. That's what your error is. Uh, is my screen still showing on your screen or not? It's still showing. Okay. Angie, what I'm saying is you've got to put this onto yours. You've got to put a comma here, then an area code not in quotes, then a comma, then a number that's in quotes. Everything else, okay. looked, everything else looked okay in the query. So fix that, run it, let me know, Angie, if it works. Did you fix it? I thought I did, but I'm still getting the error. Did you take this 314 like I've got here? That's not in quotes. I did. All right, are you still oh, getting oh, it? Oh, I error? found it. I think okay. I found it. Before you run the before you run the query, save everything that's in there. So highlight all of it and copy it to the clipboard in case it does work. Okay, it worked and can I save it after the query? Yeah, you can do it now, sure. But you, okay. what, what I'm saying is I want you to take that information, copy that back into the, in, into the um, worksheet. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Okay, Keegan, now you had mentioned before, you know, if I do a select star now from customers and I go in there and I run this, and it's going to be the same for both of you, there's now 28. To see you on the second page, you're going to have to click this, and boom, there it is. Well, what if you don't want to do that? All right, you don't have to. For instance, you could have just said, select star from customers where, I don't know, first name equals Jeff, in my case, and, and it's gotta be customer first name, where customer first name equals Jeff and customer last name equals Scott. See what I'm saying? I mean, we could have done this a whole bunch of different ways is what I'm telling you. And now notice when I run this, it only brings up one customer. So I can tell whether or not I'm there. 
you can actually check on any of these fields. So we could have come in there, we could have said anything. We could have said where first name is Jeff and last name is Scott. We could have said where customer ID equals 28 because that's my ID. And again, you'll see I'm getting that information. I'm asking you the question, does that make sense to both of you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then if you if you don't have, if you don't, if you uh, haven't done so already, please copy the query that you had work, copy it back into your S, into the Word document I sent you. All right. My 10 minute thing has come up, so I'm going to generate another URL. That was a little taxing. So let's come back. I've got 838. Let's come back in 10 minutes back at 850. I'll have the URL up at about 848. Both with me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'll talk to you then.